It's a Conspiracy est un fier membre d'Alberta Podcast Network, cultivé localement et soutenu par la communauté. Pour une liste d'autres programmes amusants, veuillez consulter albertapodcastnetwork.com où vous pouvez trouver des émissions comme « I have some notes ». Episode 8, The Church of Morgan. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to It's Conspiracy. This is the podcast where we lay out the beliefs behind selected conspiracy theories, alternative accounts, legends, myths, and more. I'm your host, Andrew, and I do not claim to be an expert on anything we're going to discuss today, and we'll probably be wrong about everything because our last episode, the numbering thing seemed to confuse a couple people. So it was like, it's your 100th episode, but you said it's only your seventh. <laughs> so it was our seventh episode of our fourth season, but our 100th our hundredth 100 overall our, yeah so sorry if that confused anybody <laughs> how, how many more episodes till we get to go into syndication <laughs> <laughs> just one more this will be it this is the magic <laughs> one here we go and counting really isn't my thing anyway so just shut the front i was door. surprised we got to 100 <laughs> <laughs> ran out of fingers and toes so fast <laughs> As always, if you'd like to see where we got the salty joys of the North Pole covered in peanuts that we're going to chin wag on, then please check out the episode description. Charlie was raised by wolves, and he can only feel the warm validation of love that you offer when you regard the carcasses he piles around you. So good boy. That's a, that's a good boy. Real I good made boy. this that's for you. Boy. Yeah. Here, Thank you. I'm contributing. Ah. <laughs> Uh, and we are a proud member of the Alberta Podcast Network. Yay, team. Oh, yay, damn. friends. Yay, squad. They are very nice people. You can check us out at itsconspiracypodcast.com. Our Twitter, at Is It A Conspiracy. That's run by the social media influencer, CI Madman. Our Facebook group and our Instagram page, It's A Conspiracy Podcast. That's run by Greg. Our email and our Patreon page, patreon.com slash it's a conspiracy. Very nice. I wasn't sure which one you were going to put in this time. We haven't heard the uh, the Isaac Hayes button for a little while. So <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. All righty then. Joining, joining the online distance communication time today is Charming Charlie and Gorgeous Greg. These buckwheat noodles are going to interject as they see fit. And I do so much appreciate their socially distanced digital company. I haven't showered yet bit of a stench you guys are oh, welcome so coffee breath yeah. amen all right i did yeah. i got distracted this morning doing something else so i've i've yet to brush my teeth so mm. you're lucky so the halitosis good heavens uh and i, I guess that we, we don't touch on this very often but even if greg and i did stink to high heaven charlie is he wouldn't small. know doesn't He's matter to like, me yeah couldn't tell i don't love but you any less can you, if you look at someone, could you be like, you must, I can't smell you, but you must stink because there's something on you that I can tell. You know, pig pen walks around, got those little squiggly lines. Yeah, I can <laughs> see little squiggly lines sometimes. Squiggly lines. Yeah. Uh, however, now, however, here's an interesting oh. fact on that is that the other day I was here. I almost, it's, it's like not a quite a smell, but I was pouring a water vinegar solution into the sink. Mm. And I got some fumes of the vinegar and I was like, oh, that's vinegar. <laughs> Though I can tell things like that. The vinegar strokes. Yeah. <laughs> one of one of the last episodes we did in person before the lockdown, I think we were drinking. Two of us got a glass of water and one of us got a glass of vinegar for some reason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was our socially distanced episode. Yeah. yeah I, I don't remember what happened there, but yeah. I'll Ooh. tell you, it wasn't me who got the vinegar. No, I, I think either. I'm. Yeah, I think I got it. <laughs> if I recall. <laughs> yeah, not a not a nice memory. Anyways, uh, Charlie, with a yeah, 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 or a no, no, no. Can you tell me if you've heard of this? Either of these three theories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, number one, what is Festivus? <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Number two, the secret story behind Last Christmas. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, number three, 10 Christmas traditions you may not have heard of. Well, then I hope no, no, no. Okay. Otherwise, that's a misleading title. 
Number five will surprise you. <laughs> okay. So subject number one, what is Festivus? Oh, Festivus. Oh, Festivus. A holiday for the rest of us. So are you sick of Christmas? Are you sick of the other holidays around this year that I can't mention because I don't want to offend anyone by suggesting that any of them are something you could get sick of? Humbug. Uh, well, yeah, thankfully there's Festivus. A holiday for the rest of us. Uh, Festivus is an annual tradition that takes place on December 23rd and is essentially, to to just go right to the core of it, it's a mean-spirited rebuke of the consumerism that is just omnivorous at this time of year. Uh, The main symbol is a pole. No, Charlie, I don't mean someone from Poland. I mean an actual (laughs) aluminum pole. And uh, for example, if you're sick of hugging, you get fist fights and feats of strength. If you need a little more excitement in your life, a little more jazz, then uh, basically you're surrounded by miracles because anything that happens, no matter how mundane, is a Festivus miracle. That that is fantastic. So Love every it. day should be Festivus. And it it, it originates from Poland. <laughs> well, there's a po- there's a pole. Oh, but I don't mean a pole as in someone from Poland. Well, you know yeah. what they say about Polish people. What's that? They're generally very nice people. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's the word on the street. Polish are good people. They are. Uh, A lot of people assume that Festivus harkens back to the days of Seinfeld. But they are making an ass out of you and me because it actually harkens back decades before Seinfeld was ever, ever a thing. In the mid-1960s, a writer for Reader's Digest named Daniel O'Keefe began the celebration with his family. Uh, There was a total lack of polls. Uh, The family were (laughs) Dutch-Irish. But there were airing of grievances. (laughs) There were airing of grievances and differing themes in defiance of anything Yule Tidian, as in stemming from the Yule Tides. The date was originally picked because Daniel O'Keefe had asked his wife out for a date on that date. So that was the date they picked. Um, It was their date date. Date night. So partly partly anniversary, it would seem. Yeah. At the same time, O'Keefe was collecting ideas for a book titled Stolen Lightning that in part focused on the beginning of a new religious movement. And it would seem that Festivus was something of a social experiment as well. Daniel's two children decided to incorporate the feats of strength. And voila! Uh, Speaking of Daniel's two children, one of those sires named Daniel O'Keefe Jr. became an aspiring comedian and author and went on to work in television on shows like Married with Children, The League. We're all fans of The League. Wow. The Drew Carey Show. And, of course, Seinfeld. Uh, O'Keefe brought the idea to producers of Seinfeld as he figured the tradition would be a very logical way for George Costanza and his family to celebrate the holidays. Have the three of us seen the Festivus episode? Absolutely. And I think that's an amazing connection. That's great. Oh, that is, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is pretty great. It's, it's a holiday classic. <clears throat> Since 2013, there have been a number of states across the U.S. that have unofficially recognized the holiday, and a number of cities across the country will display aluminum poles on December 23rd. Of course, a number of these aluminum poles are up every other day of the year, but that's uh, that's beside the point. And um, I'd like to welcome to the stage Candy. <laughs> Before I explain the proper way to celebrate Festivus, it has to be pointed out that the traditional meal... Uh, is meat. So just lots of meat. (laughs) Um, The episode of Seinfeld time that featured the party didn't make it entirely clear what was being served. So in 2021, avid celebrants are suggesting meatloaf served on a frock of lettuce. (laughs) So I'm not exactly sure what a frock is like uh, the friars haircut. I think it's the frock. I'm not. Yeah. So a frock of lettuce, go get a frock of lettuce. Uh, at your grocer, that'd be fine. You know what um, I feel like? I feel like a frock is, you know, Kermit the Frog, you know, and he's got the thing around his neck. I think that's a frock. <laughs> his it's a frog, his frog. Little is that a necklace or is that part of his body? No, that, that's like, part of his body, but like that's oh, like don't. that's a frock. <laughs> the, the ruffle around his face. Yeah, he frog. doesn't take it off at night. It's not it's not yeah. like a puka shell necklace for him or anything. I've never <laughs> seen him sleeping. I don't know. Uh anyways, so a frock of lettuce, which is Let's Part just of say a circular body. piece of lettuce. <laughs> uh, but there have also been cases made for turkey, ham, beef, or lamb. After the carnivorous feasting is finished, the occasion is marked with a slice of pecan pie. Oh, boy. Damn. Damn. That's 
That's speaking my language too. Alrighty then, uh, here are the rules for how to celebrate Festivus. Uh, number one, Hello. get a Festivus pole unadorned and ready to rock. Number two, Hello. eat the meal as described above. Number three, Hello. air your grievances. So you are free to explain how anyone present has disappointed you over the past year and they must listen. You in return must listen to them. <laughs> Go around the circle. Very healthy. Very, uh, yeah, speaking your truth. Number four, Hello. you join in the feats of strength. This is where the wrestling comes in and the party cannot conclude until the host is pinned to the floor. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Hello. Uh, you have to mark all Festivus miracles. Hilarious. So, hey, we got the kids from the daycare and that weird smell's gone. Or it's a uh, Festivus I, miracle. It's a Festivus, Festivus miracle. miracle. I dropped my toast and it landed with the peanut butter facing up. Festivus, Festivus miracle. miracle. Totally. My cat went the whole night without throwing up on the heating vent. <laughs> Festivus, Festivus miracle. miracle. That's been his move lately. Yeah, he <laughs> did that this morning. Just as soon as that heat comes on, he starts throwing up. Anyways, that's <laughs> hey, that's 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 Festivus. Good times for you and yours. Sounds like a party. So your, yeah, your cat Festivus. leaves you a frock of vomit. <laughs> All right, now it's time to air out some grievances, boys. Totally. Here we go. Uh, speaking of grievances, uh, Greg, what are we? Uh, what, uh, what? 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 What are we drinking? <laughs> uh, I'm drinking <laughs> uh, from a local producer, Town Square Brewing. They have a um, a dark saison, which is kind of based on like a Coca Cola flavored beer. Does not taste like Coca Cola, unfortunately. Um, I did enjoy it, but if you're a Saison fan, I would probably steer in a different direction. Mm. Uh, the writing on the wall says, This cola-inspired dark Saison finish is dry and features peppery fennels and fruity esters characteristic of our favorite French Saison yeast. The aroma brings big cola notes from the addition of orange and lime zest, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Did you know that this magic combination of ingredients is what makes cola taste like cola? Now you do. Really? So, so yeah. cola is cola like curry? Like it's a blend of things that. Whoa. What? Hey, Greg. Oh, nice can. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. They're even using, we're looking at, at, at Greg's can right now and yeah. it's looking, looking good. I don't like to take it out often, but when I do, <laughs> <laughs> shine it up real nice. I, I always assumed cola was based on like the cola nut. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that, you know, you know, but what do I know? I'm just a. There, is there it. is there no cola nut in your beverage? No, it's uh, what they what they did is they added orange, lime zest, cinnamon, and nutmeg to kind of like um, accentuate like the the basic flavors that are in Coca Cola. Sort of replicate that. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh. cinnamon and nutmeg. You say uh, mm -hmm. sounds festive. It does sound it's, festive. It, that's sounds why perfect I, for, I uh, mentioned it, guys. Get on get on my level. Oh, sorry. Come on. oh <laughs> right. I did Damn it. it. Sorry. Uh, anyway, sorry. It's not to sound so pretentious about the beers that I drink, but uh, <laughs> Andrew, what are you drinking? I am drinking a Naughty Amber Amber Ale from the good people at Fat Unicorn Brewing, which is a new brewery here in Edmonton. And uh, it, it was good. I'm not drinking it currently. Uh, I, I have drank it. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Um, this is a podcast. Mm. They don't know. They don't need to see that. They oh, don't know that. I'm sorry. Oh, there you go. Mm. Good, 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 good. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Naughty Amber Amber Ale is an unfiltered ruby red beer that is slightly higher in IBU. A beer that starts with rich malt flavors and finishes hoppy but clean. A blend of traditional and untraditional malts and hops to create the great balance of taste and smooth flavor. So it was good. I really enjoyed. Uh, you guys are going to be shocked when I say my favorite part of this <laughs> was, in fact... Greg's giant the boom. can. The can. <laughs> of course. But look at these cross. labels. How great are these labels? So it's Fat Unicorn, but it's a picture of a rhinoceros. Oh, I get it. Fat Unicorn. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the website. It's just F-U Brew. I'm like, yes. Yeah, that's, that's good. Brew. That's good branding. <laughs> so uh, I, wanted, I wanted to save the spoiler of the rhinoceros, but I, I feel like what is a rhinoceros if not... Fat unicorn. fat unicorn. Oh, yeah. we could have just said fat unicorns and then everybody made everybody go to the website and check it out. Yeah. I know they're not, they're not going to do it. They need to be told. That's true. But it's it's right at West Edmonton Mall. Beautiful little brewery and really good stuff. 
and uh, go check them out. Yeah. Skaboom. Okay. okay. All right, the chunks. What are you, uh, what are we drinking? Well, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but we were just at Omen Brewing. And what did I do? If I'm at a brewery, I'm going to load up on some of that beer. <laughs> so I'm enjoying a night rider or, or the yeah. and beer. I can't remember if we read this one's description when we were there or not, but a rog and beer is a German rye beer. It's different from a North American rye beer. It has 50% rye in the grain bill, giving it a velvety smooth, full-bodied mouthfeel with a bit of whiskey edge character. It's a unique style of beer, unlike anything you've ever tried. Oh, man. So good. Oof. Yeah, that one was a, was a tasty beast. That's why yeah. I, filled, I filled up my mini fridge. I'm, I'm stocked mm. for the for the month now. That was my, uh, that was definitely my, my, my sort of takeaway from the, from the brewery. Your takeaway. You took some yeah, away. I did. I took some away, but yeah. I was like, man, this beer is just, it's so unique and so good. Like, mm-hmm. I just love it so much. Their, yeah. their Black Forest Milk Stout was pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Nice and stouty. You want to well, hear more gonna... about that? Listen to the last episode, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's going to take us to advertisement number one. This episode of It's a Conspiracy is brought to you by Taproot Edmonton, which publishes curiosity-driven stories, topical newsletters, and locally focused podcasts, all in the service of informing Edmontonians about their community. Taproot publishes a weekly food roundup sharing the latest on the restaurants, chefs, producers, events, and more. Subscribe to the food roundup for free at taprootedmonton.ca. That's taprootedmonton.ca. Okay, we are back with subject number two, the secret story behind Last Christmas. So Last Christmas, the Wham! offering that has defined holiday shopping for almost 40 years, it has not only inspired our own, the three of us participate in Whamageddon. Whamageddon. Uh, that's, that's where you have a group of friends, you see who can go the longest in December without accidentally hearing the song starts on December 1st. So Charlie, you said you heard it at the end of November, November. So that doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Losers admit defeat by posting hashtag whamageddon on social media. And the last one standing gets bragging rights and $100,000. Whoa. That'd be amazing. (laughs) Uh, Collected from Andy. Yeah. So you can have the cover versions in this. So all through this segment, we'll have uh if you if you hear the song, you're not actually listening because it's it has to be the the wham version, not the. Yeah, that would be a real big move is to tell everybody mm-hmm. about the contest and then add, like just instantly the just like <laughs> yep. Rick well, one of the rules everyone. is I everybody look I, under your chairs. It's <laughs> wham. <laughs> it's George Michael's ashes. Um, Whoa. I, <laughs> <laughs> Coming in. It's hot. uh it's, yeah, so you can't you can't invite someone to listen. I can't be like, hey, check out this email. Like, you'll never has believe. Be, it has to be incidental. It has yeah. to be somewhere where it's playing, and you're like, it's omnivorous. It's everywhere. You keep saying omnivorous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I noticed it the first time. Now I'm gonna call out call you out this time. So, what does that mean uh, to you? Omnivorous. That is. Uh, that, mean to you? <laughs> that means like I just consume all things. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Andrew Ridgely, that is. Very British. Uh, he's the other guy in Wham! Quite. So Andrew Ridgely. Quite. Thank you. He shared the secret story in January of 2021. In late 1983, the two were enjoying a bit of a holiday rump at George Michael's family's home. At one point during dinner, George disappeared for about an hour. And when he returned, he sported a gigantic grin and looked as if he had struck gold, which, of course, he had. So he invited Andrew up to his room and explained that he'd had an idea for a song mid-meal and had to run upstairs to record it. The entire tune just sort of popped out at George's gob. And that bloody well was Uh, the song, of course, was Last Christmas. So the song and accompanying video took the world by storm and it reached number two in the UK charts. Right behind the power of love. What a great song that is. And then uh, that We Are the World thing that came out at the same time as well. So I don't know. Oh, if you hey, guys wait, Andy. We Are the World. Yeah. What was number one again? <laughs> no, 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 no. The video also featured the last time George Michael was seen without a beard. And uh, number two, the backup singers from Wham! Uh, the next year, the song was a massive hit again, but it did not actually crack the number one spot. 
In its 38-year run, it managed to make it to number two almost every year, bringing in a delightful holiday bonus for wham. So year after year, it went to number two, never, never cracked that number one spot. In 1986, publishing company Dick James Music, and that is a spectacular name for a company, Dick James Music. <laughs> they, they sued Wham on behalf of none other than Barry Manilow and the Carpenters, saying that the song had been plagiarized. So I'm just going to play you guys a little, a, a, wee, a wee little bit. But this doesn't disqualify us. No, the, no, this is not the song. This is, uh, so Barry Manilow and the Carpenters were like, yeah, you bloody stole our song, George. What did, and, wouldn't uh, he say it more? Uh, yeah, never mind. You want to? You want to? You stole our song, George. That's exactly what Barry Manilow sounds like. I'm gonna 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 rip your heart out and eat it. I don't know what Barry is. Barry Manilow. I don't know where he's from. Where are you? He He was Barry Mad. We'll just leave it at that. (laughs) There you go. Gosh, it is. Uh, Now, where's where are we? Okay, showing us a song. I was showing you a song. Um, We'll share from here. So the part in particular was this part right there. The opening beginning. So you kind of put us at a disadvantage because I can't go fucking listen to the original George Michael version. No, I hear it. Oh, yeah, I hear it. It's right there. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't know that that. You know, if if there if that would have been also the vocal melody, then I would have said, Please well, yeah, the, the whole thing went because there was a guy that came in like a, a musicologist and was like, this melody and those chords have been like used a, a Brazilian times. You don't the own the chords, years. Jack. Yeah, totally. The case was eventually dismissed and the song continued peaking at number two whilst simultaneously spawning hundreds, even thousands of cover versions from artists such as Coldplay uh greg's one of greg's favorite singers ariana grande kylie minogue yes please jimmy eat world the cast of glee and the delightful 2000 swick 2000 swick the delightful (laughs) 2006 swedish hit from the cgi artist crazy frog oh my god (laughs) have you guys heard crazy frog before yes i've heard of my (laughs) joke baby No, 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 no. I mean, maybe he covers it, but he covers it. No, no, no. He does a cover of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's not Cotton Eye Joe. How dare you? You think that bad? (laughs) No, no, no. I will stand behind the original Cotton Eye Joe. A film version of the song in collaboration with George Michael finally began to materialize after years of attempts. So this was something he always had in mind. That's what the video stemmed from. The video in which he's got a lot of chemistry with everybody happening in that video. Uh, this movie, which featured Amelia Clark from Greg and Charlie's favorite show, Game of Thrones, and Henry Golding from Crazy Rich Asians, was made Andrew's on Michael's show. I do. I, that's a great movie. Um, it was made on Michael's stipulation that actor Emma Thompson write the screenplay. So here's the synopsis. Kate is a young woman subscribed to bad decisions. Working as an elf in a year round Christmas store is not good enough for the wannabe singer. However, she meets Tom there. Her life takes a new turn for Kate. It seems too good to be true. Now, I just want to point out something here. She works in a year. She works as an elf in a year round Christmas store. Boy, what a (laughs) what a nightmare every day. (laughs) <laughs> every day is christmas yeah <laughs> if every day is christmas then no day is christmas <laughs> george michael was never able to see the movie as he sadly passed away in 2016 on christmas day so that was his last christmas <laughs> it's a conspiracy yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i remember that i know so sad Epilogue in 2017, one year later, uh, the song finally reached number one spot that uh, George and Andrew Ridgely had coveted for so long as fans rallied to make their dreams come true of reaching the top of the charts at last. And uh, oh, sorry, one more final fun fact here. George Michael was very proud and consistently pointed it out to anyone that was listening that he played the jingle bells on the recording himself. So I bloody did it myself. I did. That's Back all in foggy me. London town. It's all me. Yeah. <laughs> the jingle bells. I'm the jingle baller. 
So that's uh, the secret story behind Last Christmas. Do you guys do you guys like that song? Do you guys feel it in your heart? I'm singing it in my head right now because I haven't been able to listen to it for the past two years. Do you, would you do you genuinely enjoy that song, Greg? I do. Okay. I genuinely enjoy George Michael. I, the sad thing, and I was going to add a bonus fact, but you kind of mm. brought up, is that he passed away on Christmas. I know. I ended, so up, sad. Working, I ended up working that day, um, and I spent my entire time in the kitchen listening to George Michael's Christmas album okay. uh, and his other albums, not knowing that he had passed away. That was just kind of like a magic moment. Moments of Greg. Yeah. Sad, but magic. A magic wham moment. Uh, all right, so I here have uh, I have here subject number three: ten traditions you may or may not have heard of. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Okay, so here are ten odd ways, odd is indifferent. Ten ten alternative ways to celebrate the season that you may not have heard of. You're saying these are wrong, Andrew. These are these are not wrong. I'm not saying they're wrong. <laughs> That's that not what, what I'm saying? saying. All the other holidays are great. I'm not making fun of anything else, and I don't want to. Every get holiday is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so number one, a gene. Have you heard of Yule Cat? It sounds great, but this evil beast from the Iceland will devour anyone who didn't receive new clothes on Christmas Eve. I love so, it. Yeah, so do I. very specific. Uh, interestingly, Santa doesn't make it to Iceland. Instead, he sends 13 Yule lads who are little trolls that travel the countryside dropping off presents. Oh, those guys love trolls up there. That's their jam. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm, surprised the, I'm surprised the trolls aren't like tossed by giants over a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> like a shirt yeah. cannon. Who needs <laughs> slaves? We need guys, giant trolls. Yeah. Trolls. <laughs> <laughs> it's a troll cannon. Uh, number two. <laughs> have you heard of Christmas spider? So in the Ukraine, which is very strong, there is a story of a poor woman who went to sleep on Christmas Eve, tortured by the fact that her tree didn't have any decorations on it. When she awoke, she was amazed to see that the spider living in her home had covered the tree in a silken spider web. It's like Charlotte's web. And now I'm going to cry. Just that's beautiful. Yeah. Give me a second. Oh. They wiggle and jiggle and tickle inside her. Yeah. I guess she'll die. <laughs> <laughs> but how great is that? So a lot of Ukrainian families will have this like super cool uh, spider decoration on their tree. Number three, three. Have you heard of fermented bird holiday meal? <laughs> so in Greenland, it is customary. <laughs> this is a little... Well, I don't want to say nasty. This is so this, catchy the way you I would, say that. Holiday fermented meal. bird holiday meal. Uh, it is customary for small Arctic birds to be put in the belly of a seal, buried in the ground, dug up several months later, and eaten for the holidays. Mm. Buried in the, be- in the belly of a seal. I think that was a mm. Tom Waits song. Number four. Have you heard of Mary, the undead mule? So, <laughs> oh, the Welsh. In South Wales, there is an undead horse that is paraded around the village to uh, wassail families. Have either of you ever heard of wassailing before? I've heard of wassailing. Here we come a wassailing. Yes, Did you know that it's wassailing? Yeah, but it features an undead mule. A zombie mule. A zombie mule. Like, how does the song leave that part out? Here we come a wassailing. No reference to a mule. zombie. Yeah. Anyways, a... Uh, a white sheet is draped over a horse's skull, and the wassailing friends announce their presence to Holmes by having the skull peer in the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! And then, then it doesn't leave until it drinks all your drinks and eats all oh, your food. Amazing! So I just want to show you guys. Here's one here. Oh yeah! <laughs> I know. Dope. Can you imagine that tapping on your window at night? It's got eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's that's balls, so it can watch you. That's Mary the Undead Mule. Uh, number five. Death. Have you heard of Japanese people going to KFC? I can confirm this. That's an odd custom for people in Japan to flock to their closest KFC on Christmas Day. They don't really celebrate Christmas there. It's just another day. And why that day is the day to go to KFC is a bit of a mystery. 
So yeah. yeah. What do they did they just they just order anything or is there something specific that they oh order? they get they get some chicken they get a big well, yeah but like you know they, they don't get like a I don't know if they get a, like a three piece with biscuits and gravy yeah did they get the <laughs> whole deal did they double down or what do they do they give you the uh, what are those bowls called they're like Patton Oswalt does a whole thing about KFCs like chicken bowls <laughs> it's just a big <laughs> slop it's all put together and they just give you a spoon and ugh. Mm-hmm. it's the hot brown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, number six, Christ. I think I'm going to try this out this year. So number six is, have you heard of radishes in Oaxaca, Mexico? It is customary for families to carve nativity scenes out of radishes. So here's, let me just, okay. Yeah. Let's see what this looks like. Cause like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've heard of radishes and I generally know them to be quite small. Mm-hmm. Are you daikon's well, radish? Yeah. I was going to say if it depends on the kind of radish we're talking about here. True. True. Look at these little guys. You're like a little mariachi band. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a nativity scene. Yeah, it's a nativity scene. Yeah, I think those are the instead of, yep, I'm sure Jesus is in there somewhere. Not sure. He's in one of the drums. I, I could be wrong about this, but I know in Costa Rica, it's not Santa delivering presents there either, but baby Jesus comes to your house and leaves you presents. So that kid can move. I know. <laughs> so he comes to your place, leaves you presents and, and goes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the same in Mexico or not. I'm not, uh, yeah, not going to presume that. And there's no way of looking it up. So I better just, yeah. Uh, okay. Number, where were we at here? <laughs> Number eight. <Damn> it. Seven. <laughs> Okay, I think this is seven. Uh, number seven, we'll just say seven. Have you heard of wedding proposal predictors in the Czech Republic, it is customary on Christmas Day for single women to stand at the front door of their house and throw a shoe over their shoulder. If the shoe lands with the toe pointing towards the door, then that lucky lass will be wed before the next Christmas. Science. Science! Num- <laughs> number eight. Восемь. Have you heard of witches? So Norwegians believe that Christmas is when the witches start to show up. So obviously they start hiding all the brooms lying around their house. So put those brooms away. And then witches be like, where are my brooms at? <laughs> no. uh, number nine. David. Have you heard of Hide the Almond in oh Switzerland? It depends which version of the Hide the Almond. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. Switzerland, it is customary to eat rice pudding for breakfast on Christmas morning. One almond is put into a giant tub of uh, the slop and whichever lucky lady finds the almond, hopefully without choking, holy smokes, will be wed before the next Christmas. What would you yeah. rather do? Throw a shoe or possibly choke on an almond? Choke on a shoe. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's what I'd rather do. That's called fusion, baby. <laughs> so we had hide the almond. Uh, have you ever heard of hide the pickle? Yes. So this odd custom has a number of origins. <laughs> Maybe That's German. Uh, <laughs> and it works like this on christmas eve parents hide the pickle in the tree or maybe somewhere else in the house and children get up in the morning to look for it the winner gets to be pickle champion for a year and gets all of the good luck and gets to eat the tree pickle i might get to eat the tree pickle i don't know is it a real pickle a golden pickle like what kind of pickle are we talking about here does it matter you are the pickle king for the entire year pickle champ <laughs> the pickle king i would hold that over everybody's head Mm -hmm. oh man what'd you do i'm the pickle king bitch yourself a pickle crown (laughs) big uh and so that's 10 ways that people celebrate the holidays yep number five did surprise me it number five was uh going back was japanese people going to kfc good times you know maybe it's because they're like we've seen people eating turkey and like chicken you know eat that fowl Yeah, it's just a super American thing to eat some type of just, bird on a holiday. They really mm-hmm. want to eat something foul. That's not funny. It was, <laughs> it was uh, very funny. <laughs> when when Paula was on, she told us, and I never knew about this, but she's like, yeah, a lot of Jewish families will go to the movies and get Chinese food on on Christmas December, yeah. on on Christmas Day. If pop culture yeah. has, caught, has taught me anything, then yes, that's absolutely true. That's the things that happen when yeah, just like crazy. All right, so that's going to take us to. Advertisement number two. Cold drafts, flickering lights, and where's that leak coming from? If you've ever wondered what's really going on in your home, Rumi's Ask a Home Inspector service can help. Connect with a certified professional home inspector by phone or video call and get your questions answered. 
Rumi will let you know what's easily fixable with a little DIY or when you might need to call in some professional help. Visit Rumi.ca, that's R-U-M-I dot C-A, and book your Ask a Home Inspector appointment today. <laughs> oh, we were just laughing about something together here. I didn't oh, just. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that was good. That was funny. Okay, so we're going to talk about what we have on uh, Christmas breakfast. So we'll just kind of be like, hey, this is what I'm going to have in the morning meal. Charlie, do you have your randomizer ready to randomize us so we can just take time in the sharing circle? Absolutely. 100% always without fail. Nice. Seamless transitions. Just like this. Just like this. Oh, you want me to run it now? Yeah. If we oh, yeah, sure. Fire up. Fire up the old girl. Andrew. Oh, there we go. Okay. I am on Christmas morning. What I'm going to do this year, which I like to do on my own. This will be the first year I'm going to try to introduce it to my children. They're both probably going to be like, blah, yuck, it's gross and different. But we're going to get some, uh, some croissants, some scrambled eggs, some smoked salmon, and put that all together as like a little Christmas meal and be like, here you go, kids. Here's something really nice. Uh, eggs and salmon aren't something that we do very often, but it is a really nice, nice little tasty treat. Mm. I might drop Charlie off one and I'll be like, you can look at it, but if look, you t- don't touch, get it out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Round two. Oh, Greg. Oh, oh hey. um, <clears throat> Well, because I'm so young, I have two traditions because I'm young enough to have two traditions. Oh, it takes a lot of energy. Uh, yeah. Flex. Yeah. You know, well, when, you know, you got kids and, you know, family, like, I get it. <laughs> I understand. You guys work really hard. Don't worry about it. I got it. I'll take care of it for you. <laughs> um, so when I was a kid uh, in, in our stockings, my parents would always give us a mandarin orange and then the tiny box of our favorite um, cereal. Um, since we weren't very often allowed to have our favorite cereals because it contained high amounts of high fructose corn syrup and other types of sugars. Mm-hmm. I always got corn pops because I wanted to maximize the amount of uh, chemicals going into my body. Didn't change as I got in uh, got into adulthood. I now have an Irish coffee followed by a Bailey's and coffee followed by just a plain coffee. And then we kind of move on from there. Then you bring out the corn pops. Corn pops. Oh, yeah. yeah corn pops. Always got to have the corn pops. Corn pop flavored coffee. That's where we're at. Oh, yeah. wicked. Do we got to? We got to. Well, I think we, we did, have one more randomizer. It, yeah, I don't know who's there, next. There we yeah. go. Who, if we couldn't yeah. know who will be lost. You know what this one is? Oh, it finally landed on me. Oh, oh, I had I no idea. It, 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 you know, you know, like in uh, where it it almost clicks on the last person. It was almost Andrew again, but then it just oh. ticked over to me. Christmas breakfast is going to be lovingly enjoyed. It's less of a specific item and more of a Christmas breakfast feast at the Scream family house. So I mm. I still wake up. Even though I don't live there anymore, wake up early, head on over, truck on over to the parents' place, the folks' place, and uh, we open a couple of presents, and then we go crazy with a breakfast. We got eggs and sausages and bacon and toast and coffee and orange juice, all sorts of delightful things. Yeah, dude, that sounds good. So is your family more of like, uh, let's have Christmas breakfast rather than like Christmas dinner? No, we sat, we both, we just gorge all day long. Just gorge all day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Sat long up to the Christmas trough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well we nap we nap. we kind of skip lunch you just nap in the middle of the day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go for a walk <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> that does sound very very nice getting hungry just thinking about it here mm. um all right then you undead mules bring us all the presents now uh we sure do appreciate you swinging by to hang out with us again and we will be back very soon with episode 9 that's going to be our mid-season review and our theories of 2021 in early 2022 how futuristic does that sound <laughs> who who would have thought we'd live until the year 2022 right like and how long is it going to be before we drop the 20 and just say 22 like i normally if i'm like oh 97 i don't have to say what in 1990 like is it going to be this year? 21. The yeah, ass end 21. of 21. Totally. We say, oh, yeah. 22. Just doesn't up. roll off the tongue as well. I know. We got to add that 2020. It's like saying WWW. Like that's kind of gone now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I thought WWW. Pronounced... Dot... 
Just go to <laughs> google.com. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'm very excited that we have all lived until this year. Maybe some of us won't live until 2022. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Anywho, in the meantime, if you're needing some Jim Dandy on your John Candy, then slide into the past cast and social media stuff at itsconspiracypodcast.com. In the spirit of cheerfulness and inclusivity, 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 I think, in the spirit of cheerfulness and inclusion, <laughs> I thought I would end by turning to the most romantic language I know of, Klingon. So here's how you say, may you celebrate honorably. Bat ul blop judge. Bat ul blop judge to you too, buddy. Gesundheit. Bye. <laughs> See you never. Oh boy, it's Santa. Ho, ho.